Welcome to MOOC's module on Graphics and Animation Development. In this video session, we will see how different game tools for selection will be utilized for effectively selecting an image or object in the current window. So the tools that we are going to focus in this session are Fuzzy Select Tool, Select by Color Tool, Intelligent Caesar Select Tool, Color Picker Tool, Foreground Select Tool. So most of the tools are being used for applying our in intelligence to get the output effectively in terms of selection. And as far as selection is concerned, if we are able to do the selection appropriately, then it will be useful for doing the further editing. So we can see again the game toolbox and in this some of the tools we have already covered in the earlier sessions and uh, let me tell you which tools we are going to cover in this session. In the first row the fourth tool is fuzzy select tool. It is shown currently at the mouse pointer. The next tool that we are going to cover is select by color. Thirdly, in the second row, the first tool, it is the intelligent scissor tool. Another tool also in this category is foreground select tool. And uh, fifth tool that we are going to cover is uh, available that is color, color picker tool. So these five tools will be covered in this session. So let us see how fuzzy select tool can be used for doing the selection part. This tool is used for selecting an area having sharp edges or background with solid color. So here we need to understand the characteristics of the image to be edited or the image from where we are going to make the selection. If the image is having sharp edges or the background color pixels are of the same color having solid color rather than transparency present. So it is similar to Adobe Photoshop Magic Wand tool. The applicability is similar to that tool and we will learn how different tools options related to fuzzy select tool will be used. This tool can be activated in different manners. The first one is by using the tool directly from the toolbox or we can also use the keyboard shortcut that is U. If we are directly pressing on the keyboard key U, then the tool fuzzy select tool will be activated. Another way to activate the fuzzy select tool is by going through the menu available. So you will have to pick the tools option from the menu bar and in that we will click on selection tools and further we will select fuzzy select. So these are the th different ways through which you can activate first of all the fuzzy select tool. This tool starts selecting when you click at a spot in the image and it expands outwards. So what happens in this particular case is when you start selecting a particular image and you initially select a point it takes it as the initial pixel color and accordingly it will pick rest of the pixels of the similar color. And when we are starting using this tool and we drag either towards the right direction then it expands the selection. Further it selects contiguous pixels whose colors are similar to the starting pixel. So as I said this fuzzy select tool is similar to magic when tool of Adobe Photoshop. So it selects the contiguous pixels. That's why this fuzzy select tool is considered to be a good choice when we are having solid color in the background or in the object. So all the contiguous pixels are having the similar color and all of them will be selected at one go. So you can also control the threshold of similarity by dragging the mouse downwards or to the right. So there is one very essential property that we that is workable with fuzzy select tool. It is threshold and by put, selecting the value for threshold we can set the uh, extent of similar pixels to be selected. So the larger you get the selected reason that all depends upon how much value for the threshold you have set. And you can also reduce the selection by dragging 
in the direction upwards or towards the left. So there are two ways, either we select the option threshold and set some value to it and accordingly the area of the image will be selected and another way is to drag in the appropriate direction of selection. So if we are moving downwards or to the right direction then the selection of pixels will be expanded and if we are moving towards left or downwards then the number of pixels selected will be reduced. There are some more options which we can use along with fuzzy select tool. One of them is select transparent areas. This option gives the magic wand the ability to select areas that are completely transparent. And this, if this option is not checked, transparent areas will never be included in the selection. So it is very useful. Most of the times either we are having more number of layers and sometimes we are having merged layer that is all the image is available only in the single layer. So we will have to intelligently click on this particular option what kind of selection we want to make. So if we think that there is some transparent pixels available in that active layer or in the complete merged layer then we can go for selecting the transparent pixels and if it is not selected then the transparent pixels will not be selected using the fuzzy select tool. Another option that you can use is sample merged. This option becomes relevant when you have several layers in your image and the active layer is either semi-transparent or if it is set to some other mode than normal mode. So in both of the cases we can go for setting this particular option. So if in this case the colors present in the layer will be different from the colors in the composite image. So we will have to see how we are going to work out using the fuzzy select tool using the option sample merged. Further if the sample merged option is unchecked the wand will only react to the colors in the active layer. As I said there are two possibilities of either having one single layer in the currently opened image or if we are having more than one layers. So if this particular option is unchecked then the effect will be only applicable to the active layer and if we have clicked on the sample merged option then it will be effective on all the visual layers or the merged layer. Threshold, this slider determines the range of colors that will be selected at the moment you click at some initial point. So what happens is threshold initially uh, helps in selecting the pixels that are available in the image. If it is let's say set to 15, so as per the threshold limit 15, it will pick all the pixels of similar color as we have clicked at some initial point. So later on if you feel that the number of pixels or the range of pixels selected is less and you are willing to select more number of pixels that may be similar to the initially selected pixel then we can increase or decrease the threshold limit. Further option that is available in fuzzy select tool is selection by. With this option you can choose which component of the image GIMP shall use to calculate the similarity. So we will also see how this selection by option works in the demo session. Select by color tool. It is one more tool available in GIMP toolbox and we can activate this particular tool from the menu bar by clicking on tools option and then selection tools and further we can select on the by color select option. Secondly the same tool can be activated by clicking on the tools icon in the toolbox. As I shown you in the earlier slide that you can directly pick this tool from the GIMP toolbox. The third way to activate the tool is by pressing the shortcut available using the keyboard that is shift and O. So if you are pressing together shift key and O then it will also activate the select by color tool. This tool further helps in selecting regions with similar colors but it is not to be contiguous pixels. So here you can understand the difference also. So let's say if you are making use of select by color tool and 
you are uh, expecting to select the reasons particularly having the similar colors. So, these pixels of similar colors need not to be contiguous. So, it means that if I am having some red color pixel at some different locations in my image, then this kind of tool will be helpful in selecting all those red pixels. They need not to be put together next to each other. So, uh, we will see in detail how it works in the demo part. It further works similar to fuzzy select tool and it takes reference the point where the user clicks first. So, it also works like the earlier tool that is a fuzzy select tool in which we use to click somewhere on the image initially. So, that particular location or reference point is taken as the initial pixel color for further selecting the similar kind of pixels. So, in this tool also if I am clicking somewhere on the image and color of the pixel is red or green accordingly rest of the pixels in the image will be selected. It also makes use of threshold property that we have earlier seen in some of the other selection tool also. The third tool in the category that we are going to cover today in this video session is intelligent Caesar select tool. This tool can be activated again in different ways. So, first of all we will see how it can be activated from the menu bar. So, you will have to again pick up the option tools then go to selection tools and further intelligent scissors. Secondly, it can be activated by clicking directly on the tools icon on the game toolbox. So, thirdly it can be activated by using the keyboard shortcut you can simply press on the I key on the keyboard and the particular tool intelligent scissor select will be activated. This tool further helps in selecting shapes by intelligent edge fitting. So, here you need to understand that if we are having a image in which the edges are having sharp contrast with respect to the background pixels. So, this kind of tool will be efficiently doing the selection part. Otherwise, we can think of picking some another tool for doing the selection. So, let us move on to some of the important guiding points while using this particular tool. So, important points while working with intelligent scissor selection tool are this tool is useful when you are trying to select a reason defined by strong color changes at the edges. So, let us say if we are having a object with black color and the background is white. So, the contrast between these two things background and the object are totally different or it is having a strong contrast. So, this kind of tool will be a good choice in that case and while using the tool control nodes or the anchor points are created. So, when we are making use of this particular tool intelligent scissors tool control points are created around the boundary that you are trying to select. So, the tool produces a continuous curve by joining all the control nodes or the anchor points. So, you can see here in this output that uh, a bird is visible and we have made use of intelligent scissor selection tool for creating this particular area selected. So, you can select from any initial point around the edge of the bird and then you can continue selecting the rest of the points. These small circles are referred as control nodes or the anchor points. So, at any time after completing this selection and after clicking on the first node from where you have started, you can modify or adjust the image from any of the anchor points. So, the selection is closed. Mostly what people do, they sometimes do not close the things properly. So, the selection is basically closed when you are clicking again on the first node. Let us say I have started from the tail of the bird. So, the selection will be complete for me when I will again go back to the starting node after selecting all the control nodes around the boundary or the reason that you are going to select and then click on the first node again at the end. So, in this particular case you will notice that three kind of icon changes will be visible. So, when you are selecting the control nodes on the boundary the shape or the icon will be different 
and when it is inside the selected area it will change its appearance and when I will click outside somewhere other than the selected area the icon will change its shape that we will see how it change its shapes during the demo session the selection can be adjusted or modified as I said so this the concept of control nodes or the anchor points while using this tool is very important if once you have selected some area and later on you realize that some of the area needs to be added so you can click anywhere on the edge already selected the control nodes will be added and you can also modify the shape of the currently selected area so what really needs to be done at the end is once you have done with this selection you need to validate the selection and for that purpose you will have to click inside the selected area so let me show you the previous slide so in this slide you can see that the bird area is selected as per our requirement so this selection will be validated only when I will click inside this selected area so after that you can uh, see a selected area with small dashes around the bird boundary some of the other important points related to this tool are always remember that you can get only one selection and if you will try to create a second selection then the first one will be erased as soon as the second selection will be validated so sometimes the user starts drawing some another selection after validating the first selection so in this particular case as soon as they will draw the another selection using this tool and they will again validate the second selection the first one will disappear from the screen so they need to uh, take care of this particular point that they should not go for such kind of things while selecting using this tool and always do not click inside the curve until you are completely done adjusting it so as I told you in the earlier slide the very last point highlighted in yellow color that selection is validated only when you are clicking inside the selected area so if the user has done some mistake they have clicked inside the area before they have finally done with the final selection so they will have to repeat the complete process so once you have converted it into a selection undoing takes you back to the zero stage and you will have to start constructing the curve again from scratch if you need to change it so this also you need to take care of if you have clicked on control Z option or from edit menu you have clicked on undo option then you will have to start again selecting the entire area also be sure not to switch to a different tool sometimes in between we click on some other tool in the toolbox so all the already selected portion of selection will also disappear so we need to be careful enough while using this tool so you should not go for selection of any other tool while working with intelligent scissors selection tool this tool is having similar working with the lesser tool and path tool so you will feel that it is somewhat similar to lesser tool and the path tool that we have covered earlier so now the point to understand here is so if the second selection is going from the screen once it is validated so what we can do in order to retain all the selections we can work with different mode as I uh, explained to you in the earlier selection related video sessions that uh, a selection tool is normally having different modes you can work with normal selection you can work with add selection mode or you can also work with intersection mode or subtract from selection mode so in this particular case if you want to retain both the selection selection 1 and selection 2 on the screen then you will have to work in the add selection mode next tool is color picker tool this tool helps to pick or set the color for foreground color option in game to be applied to any object or shape or area of your choice so whatsoever image is currently opened if you want to apply some color so we can also pick 
the color choice by using the color picker tool this tool is very simple and easy to use and this tool can be activated also in different manners either you simply press on o on the keyboard so it will be activated for you or you directly select it from the game toolbox so normally it set the foreground color option by using the color picker tool this tool helps to extract further we are having burma tool that is known as foreground select tool so this tool is somewhat different from the earlier tools if we are willing to extract some part of the contents visible on the screen so this tool is helpful in that case it is helpful to extract the foreground from the active layer or from a selection so when we are trying to use this particular tool the mouse pointer goes with the lasso icon so you will notice that once you have started using the foreground select tool initially the icon will be similar to the lasso tool it actually works like the fuzzy select tool and it selects as little as possible from the background so you need to take care of that while using this particular tool whatsoever area you have initially identified as the area to be selected select less number of pixels or the area from the rest of the pixels that is the background pixels so what you can do you can roughly select the foreground you want to extract and as soon as you release the mouse button the non selected part of the image will be covered with a dark blue mask kind of thing normally what we are doing while painting some portion if i want to hide some area or if i don't want to work with that normally i put something on that so that it should not be disturbed but here the working of this particular tool is again using the same kind of concept that while roughly drawing the foreground selection you can convert rest of the area into dark blue mask kind of thing if the selection is not closed its ends will be linked automatically together by a straight line and further once you have ended up with closing the selection now the icon shape will be changed to the paint brush icon so you will notice this in the demo part that how when you start with this tool it is similar to lasso and at the end it will change its icon to paint brush tool so you can see here in this output the effect of applying this particular tool except some part rest of the area is converted into dark blue mask so further in the later step we need to draw a line through the foreground so let's say i have selected some portion of the area visible on the screen so you can pick up either foreground color or the background color set in your currently opened window of gimp and you can draw a line using the paint brush so once you have drawn the line in the currently selected foreground then the pixels that are falling under that particular drawn line will be selected from the area under selection so this particular portion will be further kept for extraction so what happens is i need not to fill the complete area with that color option that is set for foreground what i can do is i can simply randomly pick some of the area out of the selected foreground we will see in detail how it works and be careful not painting the background pixels again if my objective is to pick some area from the foreground pixels i should not go with clicking somewhere on the background pixels in that particular case the final selection will be having those color pixels also and it will distort your objective also so we will take care of this while doing the things so here in this figure you can see that this bird is having some portion of it with the original pixel colors and rest of the area is visible to us as dark blue mask so what we are trying to do here is in the area of the foreground that i have roughly selected i am drawing with the help of paint brush tool a line over it so all the pixels that are falling under this line those similar kind of pixels will be finally selected so when you will release the mouse button all the non selected areas 
still will remain in dark color dark blue color and at the end again in order to validate the selection you will have to further click on the enter key so here you can see that once after doing all this we end up with pressing the enter key the required selection will be done and if in case you feel that some of the area that you wanted to select is left then you will have to add on into this There are some options that works along with foreground select tool. You can see here on the screen that some of the options we have already covered. So we are going to focus on the things that are new to this tool. Feather edges we have already covered with some other tools also. Contiguous option is again that we are interested in picking the pixels that are falling next to each other. Contiguous, continuous area. And then we are having mark foreground and mark background so let's see how these options are different from each other mark foreground is the default setting in this case and this foreground color of the toolbox is used to paint so if i have clicked on this particular option either manually or by default if it is set then the foreground color of the toolbox is used to paint so it means that when i am trying to mark the pixels out of the selected foreground then it will make use of foreground color option so let me explain you what does it means as uh, we have done it in the earlier part like here we are drawing this line with the paintbrush so you can see that this line is of color green and green is a foreground color selected right now so it is all because of that while using the foreground select tool i have set the option mark foreground so in case if you have not clicked on the mark foreground it will not make use of green color that is currently set as a foreground color for drawing this line so it is immaterial which color line you are using for drawing this particular paint brush line so my only objective here is to identify the color of the pixels falling under this particular line so let's say in this particular case these are of light brown color pixels of the bird body so the similar pixels related to this pixel color out of the area or the boundary that i have initially drawn will be selected similarly there is one more option that is mark background you can access this option either by clicking on the radio button or you can also switch on to this particular option by pressing on the control key while working with the foreground select tool you can see in this particular image that we are having mark foreground and mark background so what i can do either i can go to this option and click on this radio button or i can simply press control key it will automatically select the option mark background so you can switch between mark foreground and mark background using the control key also so the mouse pointer goes with a small eraser icon in this case if we are going to select the radio button next to mark background then it will change the shape of the icon it will convert it to eraser tool icon rather than paint brush and the used color is the background color so in the earlier part we have seen that paint brush will draw a line using the foreground color that was set to green but background color in this case set here is white so if i will move on to this mark background color it will make use of white color for drawing the line and the interpretation is little bit different the pixels of the selection which have the same color as the erased pixels will not be extracted and in the earlier case it was like this all the pixels falling under the drawn line will be extracted but here it is not the same all the pixels that are of the same color as the erased pixel will not be extracted so we will have to think intelligently what we want to achieve small brush or large brush one more option is available in the tools option of foreground select tool you can see that next to mark foreground and mark background is one slider is available that you can move while practically working in gimp it is ranging from small brush to large brush so it will change the size of the brush by using which you are trying to draw the line 
so if you want that the currently selected area out of the image is very small so you will have to pick the small brush size and if the area selected is big enough to work with some large scale or large size brush you can change this slider so these options are used so using this slider you can change the size of the brush basically if it is needed so in summary we can see that in this particular video session we have seen how to make use of selection tools along with their options in detail in order to achieve a efficient selection and uh, again let's see which tools we have covered in this session are we have covered most of the tools related to selection the first one was fuzzy select tool next one was select by color tool the third one we covered intelligent caesar select tool fourth tool was color picker tool and the last one was foreground select tool so i hope you have understood how different options can be set for these selection tools so with this we will end with this session and in next video session in continuity we will see how these tools can be used practically thank you